Welcome back to a special episode of the Social Web TV, and we are live at the new TV conference. So much Joseph, better than old TV conference. <laughs> you dress up special for this thing? Or? Yeah, yeah, San Francisco. You know, we got a bunch of our uh, Comcast parents here, so we want to impress. Trying to look good, yeah. Speaking of Comcast, we've got a very special guest, someone that many of you know only as Comcast Cares, Frank Eliason, who has transformed a number of things. He's transformed how a lot of us think about Twitter, and as uh, Brian Roberts, the CEO of Comcast, has said, has transform Twitter has transformed Comcast's culture. So, welcome. Thank you. And you know, it's been an interesting ride, but you know, it's great being here, get the opportunity to go to San Francisco and see a lot of our great customers. And it, fellow Comcasters. And, and you're a legend here in Silicon Valley. I mean, really, I think, uh, I, you know, having gone through this, uh, being acquired by Comcast over a year ago, um, you know, all, obviously the topic of Comcast comes up a lot, and, you know, there's, people always say some good things, some not so good things, but one thing that always comes out is, oh, man, but what they're doing with Twitter is so genius and so helpful, and I mean, it's just like, it is the most positive thing I ever hear from anybody. So all right, clearly, so let's not assume sorry. that everyone knows exactly <laughs> what Frank and team are doing. Uh, I, maybe as a preface, I find even just last weekend, I just am often explaining or defending what the heck Twitter is. <laughs> so some of us are addicted to it, some of us are using it every day in our jobs, but why don't you just tell us a little bit about how you have been using Twitter. Well, even beyond Twitter, we use social media to learn from our customers. So we, we're in blogs, we're in forums throughout the internet, we have our own forums, we're in Facebook, and Twitter is just among the many social channels that we're in. What we found is Twitter's great because it's not talked about enough with Twitter. For those of your friends that don't know Twitter, for businesses that are trying to use Twitter, Twitter search is great. It's real-time information. It's the here and now about any topic you can think of. Uh, so you can simply search what people are talking about and start engaging in conversation with them. So when we see people talking about Comcast, uh, if, it's some good, if they're saying some good things, we'll thank them for that feedback. Or if there's uh, have something where they need assistance with, we offer to help. And how so, long you been doing that? We started uh, you know, Twitter in April 2008. Uh, so we've been doing it uh, about almost a year and a half now, and it's been highly successful. And was that a big uh, corporate mandate from the CEO down, <laughs> get the onto Twitter? No, no. Uh, basically what happened, we were doing the blog stuff and the forum stuff, and became my job and then after that uh, someone told me oh you should check out this place called Twitter and like most people when I looked at Twitter I'm like, what the heck is a Twitter and I don't get it um, but I played with it we listened to it listened in the space for a while that's the key if you're a business don't just jump into a space because someone says oh go do this uh, but listen to it we'll find the nature of the conversation and understand the community aspects of the space and then as you do that then you can start to engage in the conversation which is what you get. Yeah. No, I think I think you make a good point there which is I think the reason people get so excited about what you've done with Twitter it's, it's partly that they have this very immediate channel to get very high quality feedback so I can actually get my problem solved right here on the internet. but there's also uh, an authenticity that goes with it right it feels like there's a real person there they understand where I'm coming from it sort of strips away a kind of a lot of the big corporate edifice and it's amazing how disarming that can be and how endearing that can be well I think you know social media itself is really about relationships and I think brands have not fully understood that so a lot of times brands go out there and they have brand messaging that they strive to do what we strive to do is have a dialogue, and so and that dialogue may sometimes be about Comcast, sometimes it might be about what's going on in my life. Um, so any number of things, but that all adds to that transparency that happens in the space. Now, as some of uh, some of our viewers know, I wear a couple of hats. One of them is the VP of Marketing for Plexo, so I'm kind of in the same trench as I'm trying to monitor what's being said about our brand in, on Twitter and blogs and Facebook, anywhere really where the conversation is. and. You know, with 20 million plus users around the world, that can be fairly daunting to scale that up, to have relationships with everyone who's wanting to engage in that. How are you guys handling the scale? This Comcast is massive. We're 24 million customers at, at this point, somewhere around in that area. And, you know, the, a lot of people say, oh, it's not scalable. Well, we've scaled it a while ago. Uh, for, so the people that pay attention to myself on Twitter, I'm not there as often as I used to be. When we first started doing it, it was just me. I was there morning, noon, night. Trust me, I was worn out. 
Uh, but today, my team is out there. They have their own IDs, which is very different than other brands. Uh, and they will represent themselves. They'll respond to things on my behalf. And at the same time, I do go out at different times. I'll speak on things going on in my life. I'll respond to a few different customers, too. So you can easily scale it. And, you know, but it is still having each person having their own authentic uh, way of an approach. So one of the things that's happening here is really interesting. People are, are using these tools, in particular Twitter is this example where yeah, they just make an offhand comment that maybe have 10 followers. They have no idea where that is going out. And suddenly some corporation has a, a voice, uh, well, first of all has an ear and then a voice and an outreach. Have you run into many challenges of people being both surprised and maybe even a little put off by the outreach? Actually, no, because, but it's all about the approach. Um, when we first, when someone is talking and they say something, what we really do is we'll respond, hey, can I help? Uh, or something along those lines. And the reason that we, even if we had the answer, and the reason we're doing that is we're not trying to intrude in conversation. We're just letting them know if they want assistance, they can have it, but we're not trying to do anything else. And we throw the ball in their court. If they want help, they'll respond. If they don't, they won't. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, so I think it's all in how you do it. And we learn that by listening in the space. Do you know ballpark how many different people your team talks to in a given day? Uh, many Tens, days, about thousands. Thousand, uh, about a thousand people we tweet to. We might engage in conversation, like full-fledged conversation with 100 or 200. Uh, but then it varies. There's days where it's a lot more, and then there's other days where it's quiet. Uh, but I think that goes the same as through any other communication channel. So you and your team are certainly among some of the more power users of this social media. Any uh, interesting insights in terms of tools that you're using or approaches? Uh, is everyone on the team using the same set of tools? Or uh, it's a little surprise a lot of people, but no, uh, everybody has their favorites. Uh, some people like tweets against some people like uh, seismic, seismic. I actually forget the name of it. Uh, I actually you know, can't teach an old dog new tricks. I still like to use the web interface. Uh, although on my old iPhone, school. I'm old school all the way, but on my iPhone, I do now use Simply Tweet. Um, so everybody has their preferences uh, in what to use, but all, you know, it, it, whatever works for them. We do have a back end tool, Radiant 6, that we actually use to then do analysis on this ah. stuff. But you know, in terms of the direct communication, we actually do it via any of those means. And do you have some system where you don't step on each other's toes, somebody will grab the ticket or however, you know, there's all these methods in traditional customer support you guys are doing a little bit more raw. Uh, the way actually we typically do it, uh, really simplistic, is one person on at a time. You know, usually you don't we only need more than that. But there are times, uh, like later on today, we're supposed to be on CBS News. And so whenever there's any type of newscast or some publicity of that nature, it gets busy, it'll be busy for a few days. So we actually have a plan together that we'll have about 10 people on Twitter tonight, um, right after the East Coast and West Coast feeds uh, for the newscasts, so that way people do interact with us and be there. Well, we'll certainly give you a heads up when the Social Web TV episode's about to go up, because it could be a huge crush of <laughs> viewers, loyal viewers. Cool. Well, it's really fascinating to see, and I, I certainly, as a... Uh, Comcast user have reached out to you a few times and been really impressed with you and your team. Uh, it's really exciting to see how you guys are using this stuff. Uh, thanks for coming on to our show and please join us next week or whenever we feel like it for another exciting episode of The Social Web TV. TV.